Hey yo guys, what's good, what's happening, and what's going on? Today, it's a beauty day in the bay, sorta. Not really. It's sunny out, but she's kind of frigid, frosty, fresh. She's a cold one. Not exactly a plus 30 kind of day, more like a plus eight. But hey, that's okay. I'll take it over snow. Even though last night, we did get about a frost. That was fun. Feels super bad for my friends who planted crops last weekend, thinking that summer was here, because they should know better. You live in North Bay. Every year it's like that. The weekend for the May 2-4 weekend, the friggin' weather gets really awesome and then it just takes shit. I need to throw this plug in the garbage. It doesn't work anymore. It's like you plug a sink to defrost some meat and you fill it with water and she slowly drains. Last night I did something pretty awesome. Guys, I managed to fix both Ryobi batteries. You want to know how I did it? Well, it's cool because... I did the first battery off of camera just to see if the method would work. Let me go ahead and roll the clip, check it out. This is how I fixed the Ryobi batteries. Enjoy. Did you buy a Ryobi product and the battery came dead? Are you too lazy to call the warranty company and get that thing replaced? Well, worry not, I have a fix for you. Stay tuned. If any of you guys watch the vlogs, you know that one of these batteries is good. Or was it this one? One of these batteries is, is good and one of these batteries was bad. This was the bad battery. This is the one that came with my weed whacker. And as you can see, now it's taking a charge. This is a good battery. This is a 1.5 milliamp hour and she holds. Now, the kit I bought, if you didn't watch the vlogs, is this kit here. It came with the saw, the uh, cordless drill, cordless drill and a flashlight, two batteries, and that ridiculously large carrying case. Also came with a spare charger, which is why I have two chargers. Came with a 1.5 milliamp hour battery and this big dirty four amp hour battery. Problem is, I probably said milliamp hour, I meant 1.5 amp hour. You plug it in, she goes to charge, fails the test, and then starts giving you one hell of a light show. This, my friends, is a problem with a very cool solution. Now, on these batteries, as you can see on the one that wasn't damaged, there is a little plastic piece in there. And if you take that out, Ryobi will avoid the warranty. However, if you live in Canada, Ryobi doesn't check shit because I honestly called them up and said, I bought your toolkit and I didn't even give them the right part numbers. That was all my fault. Like this battery here and this battery here both carry the same serial number pretty much. And these both are from one kit. This is from another, I think. Yes. No, this is the Weed Whackers battery. Yeah, these two came together. This is the Weed Whackers battery. That one I fixed. That one was broken. I keep messing that up. So this one here has um, a serial number starting with CS. Okay, this one here has a serial number starting with CS. This battery was good. I used it on my weed whacker. I did the lawn and all that. If you watch the video, if not. So the first thing you need to do is you need to knock out that plug because it's going to release a screw there. Now these screws are kind of special and because I'm filming with a GoPro, I can't tell you how special, but they're security Torx bits, meaning they're M10 security Torx bits and they have to have that little hole in the middle. Otherwise you're not getting the screwdriver in there. So what you got to do first is remove all the screws off your battery. Or otherwise you're not getting on the inside so i'm just gonna go ahead and do that there off camera and i'll be with you in a moment all right we got all five screws out now we can't just pull the top off problem is, is we got these little clips here so what i normally do here or what i did do here is you come in from the side you pry that up normally it clicks sometimes it doesn't do the same on the other side pry it till it releases and then start working the top off a little bit did i forget a screw Nope, I'm just still stuck. This one might be a little bit more difficult because it has that battery tester in the front. Oh, no, there it comes. There it comes. It just needed a little bit of liberation. So once you lift this off, there's nothing on here. Just your plate and that's about it. Okay. However, here's your terminal. Oh, shit. I probably need that up there. Just going to leave that there. I don't know why that was there. It's like something that would short all the terminals. There's the terminals that make contact with the drill. However, the biggest problem is this circuitry right here. Basically what this does, it's a voltage, it's a, basically a safety. Battery reaches a certain voltage that's too low. It's unsafe to charge, could blow up, doesn't want to charge. Hence the problem. Now, I showed you the flashing lights. Let me show you just how much voltage. And I, I've shown this on a previous video too. Can you guys even see the numbers on that? Hard no. Cool. That's good enough. So here's my negative pull. Here's my positive pull. We're getting five volts there. But then you come up to the terminals on top. Positive, negative, and we're getting 0 0.8. That's a problem. Because we're getting such a little voltage at the top, the system will not charge. So what I went ahead and done, 
And this might be a little bit trickier on this battery. So this is labeled, all right? Shit, I dropped that thing again. Do I even need it? I don't even know if I need it. I probably don't. I'm just gonna take it off. This is your positive terminal over here. It's not labeled, but this one is. I don't know if you can see that, but it's written ground right there, GND. GND, so what I did with the other battery, made these little gator clip things, because I couldn't find any to buy that were pre-made. And then I took the uh, non-insulated ends, because I had two gator clips that were not insulated, and two that were. I just clamped the non-insulated ground on there, just for a place to put them for the time being. I'm just going to clip them onto this plastic. This might be a little bit trickier for this one because I don't know how the heck I'm gonna attach this, but we're gonna try. And then I'm just gonna clip this onto the plastic. Hopefully it reaches and it makes contact. I guess one way to find it is voltmeter, but. Then we got positive to positive, negative to negative. Next you need a good battery, which we have right here. So let me just take this lid and fire it over here for now. These batteries are labeled positive and ground. So you just take your battery, is that in the shot? And then we have our terminals hooked up. They look like they're good. Come over here. This one does not look like it's good. It looks like it wants to jump off. Touch positive to positive, negative to negative. Do that for about 10, 15 seconds. Sorry for the awesome shot, guys. And then once you're done, I'm just gonna disconnect one of these leads. Probably clip the other one into that piece of the, the plastic top just so it doesn't touch anything. If we take our voltmeter, set it to amp hours. We have about, hmm, that didn't work. Okay, I'm not getting good connection, that's the problem. Honest to God, guys, this just worked. I just brought that other battery back to life. See, I do it and it works. I don't make a video. I do it and it doesn't and I'm having issues. That's when I hit record. Welcome to my life. You're positive, you're negative. You're in there, you're in there. Now we got connection. Now we're sending some juice. Only reason why I know that is because I saw sparking. All right, good enough. Just gonna disconnect that wire. Kinda don't wanna disconnect this wire because it was a bitch to get on. Gonna give her a quick test here on the old voltmeter and see where she's sitting now. There you go, 16 volts. That's how you jumpstart your Ryobi battery. Now to prove that this works, we'll put it back together. I'm not even gonna put the screws on. I'm just gonna jam everything back together here and we'll smash her on the charger and I'll show you that she'll accept a charge. All right, the screws are not in. Let me get all this other piss out of the way. Here. Accepting a charge like a champ. It's even showing the charging light up top. That, my friends, is how you fix your damn Ryobi batteries. You're welcome. Yeah, totally thought it was just a Torx bit to take apart the battery. So I ended up having to go to, uh, well, I had to go to Home Depot last night because I had the no gator clips here. Well, I had two gator clips and I needed four. So at uh, Home Depot, they sold a kit where you get a black insulator and a red insulator and it was like two bucks. I was like, well, I couldn't find them at Canadian Tire. Walmart, I wasn't risking it because their website's garbage. So I was like, you know what? Let's take a rip over to friggin' Home Depot. They had them on the site. Uh, it was a bitch to find. Their, their app is not as good as uh, Canadian Tires and their website the same. Doesn't really tell you what aisle it's in. Well, it tells you, it's like in aisle ECC19. And I'm like, okay, the aisles are like one, two, like whatever. They're numbered, they're not ECC19. What's really happening here? So I took a rip over there and I grabbed those, but I tried to disassemble the battery on my own and I couldn't disassemble it because it uses a Torx, but it's a security bit. So there's like a, a pin in the center of the, of the uh, the screw head. So in order to take it off, you need a special security bit that has a hole in it so that it can countersink in and then you can unscrew it. And it's a, a T10. So I ended up going to Home Depot because number one, I need a gator clips to hook onto the battery as you saw in the video, the, the clip. And number two, I needed access to those bits and they sold them by DeWalt. So I bought a set of security bits for the, uh, the job. I checked my toolkit, I didn't have any in there. I checked my bits in the garage, didn't have any in there. So push comes to shove, you gotta spend a little bit of money. It was $5.99 for the kit, came with uh, 10 different types of sizes of bits. So we're good for a lot of that. Still don't have any of those, uh, remember when I took out the battery out of the MacBook and the, uh, the screw was one of those like, it was like a, a friggin' propeller off of an airplane, it was triangle. I don't have any of those bits, but that's okay, I don't really need those. I already got the battery out. Just gotta dispose of it or take it to the gun range and shoot it, one of the two. If we do to the gun range, I'll uh, definitely videotape that because uh, pretty sure that's gonna look pretty sweet when she goes off. But yeah, uh, so we got the batteries all fixed. They're fully charged, ready to rock, life is good. So now I have two 1.5s and a four amp hour. 
and apparently Ryobi is sending me another 1.5 and a 4 amp hour. So that's awesome. We'll have plenty of power. Good to go. Good enough. Good stuff. Now, while I was at Home Depot, I came across something that looked pretty cool. Uh, it, it was carpeting. It was six by eight. And I'm thinking, you know, if I got a piece of, why is that saying one? If I got a piece of plywood, an eight foot piece of plywood and put that in the back of the truck and carpeted it with that green carpeting, that was six by eight. I'd probably cut the plywood in two. So they're like four, four foot pieces. And then I could slide them in, slide them in, lock them in place. And then I threw my mattress on top of that. That should stop the cold from breaking through the, through the bottom of the truck. And the mattress would do that as well. But that could make for an ultimate overlanding experience. See, a lot of these guys I watch online like Mav and Fishing with Becca and all these people, they basically put drawers in their trucks and all sorts of stuff. I don't want to permanent, I, I still want to use my truck as a truck, you know. Uh, if I want to build a deck in the backyard, I'm going to need my box to be able to haul wood. I'm going to need my box to be able to, uh, well, that's pretty much it, haul wood. I can't really have this bed and, and shelving system and drawer system in there because I don't want to make it a permanent camper. Like these guys built their trucks up for the content they make on YouTube, where for me, I just want it for like, let's say Oreo and I want to go somewhere for a weekend. We can just go somewhere for a weekend. He's honking right now. We can go somewhere for a weekend and camp out. Enjoy the great outdoors. Make sure she has cat food mountain and a bucket of water and we're off to the races. But I don't want anything super elaborate. I also can't use an air mattress because Oreo likes to make forts at night. He'll, like he does it upstairs, he'll dig in the mattress and it's like, come on dude. Just go to bed. I try that with an air mattress and he's just gonna rip a hole in it. We'll both be sleeping on the ground in no time and camping will suck. So uh, Canadian Tire sells a four inch memory foam mattress that is pretty rigid. A lot of people said it was great. They just throw it on the floor in their tent. You can get it in a single or a double. I'd probably get the double because once again, I have my cot, right? I got my cot. Problem is, is Oreo insists on sleeping with me. He wants to be on the bed with me to basically so we can share the warmth because he gets cold at night. And he's like, I'm gonna go snuggle daddy. And he jumps in the bed and then it's just like, come on bud. So what we're gonna probably end up doing is getting the double mattress. And that way there he can sleep on it too. I'll just put like a fitted sheet or something over it and then lock it in place with those elastic band things. And that way there it won't slide off. And then flop that on the carpeted floor and then just throw a sleeping bag on it or bring a comforter or something like something to you know wrap yourself up in some pillows. And then we go camping, have a tote back there with the stove in it and all my fishing gear. Uh, grab a cooler with some food because the double wouldn't be like I can put a queen size back there no problem a double would give me some room on the sides where I could put stuff like totes with stuff in it in a cooler with our food in it and drinks and stuff like that so and then when it comes down to okay well uh, dad contacts me and says hey Adam I need help moving uh, this okay well no problem I can take the uh, the carpeted truck bottom out and then I can go ahead and help dad move it so that's what I was thinking more of a like a solution where when I need it I can install it and when I don't I uninstall it and then I can use the truck for a truck again and a lot of these setups you see online they are literally built as a permanent structure in the vehicle some people go as far as building like these like complex shelving systems with like power generation in the back and physical outlets that you can plug into all over the place and diesel heaters because they plan on going in the winter and if it's cold they turn the diesel heater i don't want to go that extensive i want to keep it basic but functional so i was coming up with some ideas on how to build the overlander um piece of plywood cut it in half i'll see if they can rip it for me if not i can do it here not a big deal I got a skill saw and we'll just rip it in half and then carpet it and install it and see how she fits and go from there. So that's the battle plan on that topic. If you have any ideas, let me know in the comments down below because I'd be more than happy to hear them because the more ideas I get, the more ideas, the more ideas you give me, the more ideas I get and the more elaborate it becomes. But the whole idea is modular as in when we need it, we install it. When we don't, we take it out. That's the thing. No permanent structures. Nothing's getting bolted in to the box. No holes are being cut. Everything will be modular and it should be a good tent. All that moment when it's warmer outside than it is inside. Jesus Murphy, it's a little windy out though, but 
definitely warmer out here, but uh, something I was thinking about tackling tonight is finally taking a look at this. So it looks like this glass popped out. We might be able to get that seal to go over top of the glass because the problem is, is this window here will not close due to the fact that this piece up here is sticking out a bit. I don't even know if you can see that because I can't see the screen because of the sun. But yeah, I don't know if that broke. I'm seeing a screw back there. I don't know how that sits in. It's probably got to go underneath the seal. So we're going to have to take this Gorilla Tape off. I wish I had some more Gorilla Tape. So we might go to uh, Canadian Tire tonight and get some Gorilla Tape just for security reasons. In case we can't fix it ourselves, we will uh, get some Gorilla Tape. In case we have to do a little mend and defend here like Buddy did here. But it feels like behind here all this trim is there. So it just looks like maybe if I run a screwdriver along it, I might be able to bring this up and over and wrap it again. I should look and see, maybe there is a seal kit that you can buy to replace all this. Maybe that's, that'd be another solution. I'll check on Amazon, see if they, there's any sort of a Lear window kit because uh, I definitely got to fix, well, is it this side with the hole in the screen? No, this side's fine. It's um, this side over here that has the hole in the screen. Apparently a little scratch in the glass, but yeah, we'll figure that out. Because if you see here, the trim goes all around the window, stops there and comes all around the window. I don't know why he taped the window shut. That's weird. I'll have to figure that one out. Like I said, hundred bucks for a cap. Not a big deal, right? It's gonna have some quirks. Everybody asked me if I put the foam tape underneath it. It was already installed, so I just used the old stuff. So yeah, that shouldn't be that big of a deal. As long as the trim is still on it. You know what? I don't think it is. I can't see behind there either. We'll, uh, we'll have a gander at that tonight. Like I said, I'm going to take a rip over to uh, Canadian Tire and grab some Gorilla, Gorilla Tape just in case we can't fix it. Another thing I noticed that's coming back is my sinkhole. Yep, somehow she's filling back in or falling back out, whatever. So we might end up losing more friggin' sidewalks here. I don't understand how that's happening. We packed it in pretty tight last night or last night the other day. And uh, by la that, I mean last year. I can't even speak today, guys. I'm sorry. So, but yeah, these Ryobi batteries, good to go, full power. Still waiting on the new ones, but it'd be nice to have all that power because let me tell you. Another thing I did last night was uh, I came out here and I was bored and then I saw this lure that I forgot to paint. So I painted it up. Not too bad, not too bad. Just a little custom paint job. No idea how well it's gonna do, but gonna let her rip tater chip. I gotta clean up the line ties because I got a great big gob of freaking, I forgot to put the hook hanger on it. So I got a great big gob of snot on the end, but I need to uh, run my line ties, or my line ties, my um, split rings, put some hooks on it. She'll be ready to sail on the weekend. Try and catch a fish on that thing if we can. And I'm still trying to print a swim bait on my printer, but having nothing but complications with adherence, my buddy Mitch was like, should have done like me. And I'm like, what's that? And he's like, I just bought the, um, the uh, Dremel printer. And like literally the Dremel printer is, you open the box, take it out and you're good to go. Like there's no fussing about it. It's just ready to rip right out of the box. You just set it up, plug it in, load your filament and load in some G-code and boom shakalaka. You got yourself a printer, pretty sweet. And another project that I haven't even started yet is uh, this chair. I showed you these on the video of the lawnmower there. And my solution for this is going to be, I wonder if we can buy this mesh because that would be a good solution right there. If I could just replace that and probably just, that takes it off of the frame. Probably just wrap new freaking fabric in there and bolt her back in. Uh, I wonder what kind of fabric this is. If you can just find replacement fabric for it. Something that's commercially available for people like me to do stuff that I want to do. I don't know, man. I don't know. I don't know too much lately. I just, I just don't know. But it's like, my lawn looks like I didn't mow it. But I did mow it. Maybe I didn't go short enough. Maybe I should just drop the mower right on the ground and take it right down to the dirt. Probably wreck the blade on it. Poor thing would be in overdrive the whole time. Just chewing the battery up. The weed whacker did a good job. It's coming back, but I'll just keep hitting it. Gradually it'll quit. But um, 
Yeah, yeah. So like I say, tonight I'm going to take a rip over to Canadian Tire. Uh, we'll go grab some Gorilla Tape. There was something else I wanted to look at while I was there, and I can't remember what it is. Maybe I'll grab that memory foam too, just to have it on hand before they sell out, For camping season becomes something really big. And everybody's buying up all the camping supplies because I definitely do want to get that double memory foam and we'll definitely try and fix that Lear topper tonight too. Why not? Let's have a fun video full of adventure and excitement. Anyway guys, I got to rock a piss and then I got to get back to work so I will talk to you later. All right guys, work is done. Let's go see what the heck is going on underneath this tape. Peel this shit off and see what it looks like. I just watched the video. It's like almost six o'clock. Went to Canadian Tire already. Wow, this tape is on there good. When I watched the video, they take this whole window out and they redid the screens on it. So then I went on Home Depot to see just how much the screen material was. And it's not too bad. There we go. Okay, so it looks like all the trim is there. I think what we're gonna try is a screwdriver to the face. No, a uh, screwdriver to pry up that seal. See if we can wrap the window around it again. I did buy more Gorilla Tape and I also bought something better for in here when I'm making baits. They had this shop light on sale for 25, uh, 25 49. It's just a plug-in jobby. So you just come over here and you grab your plug-in, hook it up and boom shackalack LED light all over the bench, bright as frig. So that's pretty dope. Definitely appreciate that. I might put that on a smart switch though so I can just ask Google to turn it on. I came in here for a tiny little flathead screwdriver. I was about to walk out without it because I showed you guys my new light. And uh, I'm telling you, I'm easily sidetracked these days. I was not able to get the mattress for the Overlander because they ran out. I asked the guy when they're coming get, when they're gonna be getting more in stock, and he said, we don't know, they're on back order. And I'm like, lovely. So just like Dollarama, go into the store and you see something you want, you're better off to pick it up right then, or otherwise you might get boned. And especially this weekend's camping weekend, because it's made two for, up in this bag and it's just, that's quite the sound. I got a lot of cardboard in here, I gotta clean up too, because tomorrow is recycling day, so I gotta get all this shit out to the side of the road so it can be dealt with. But anyway, if we ever need to take those windows out to reseal them or whatever, it's a, it's a two man operation, but it's not too bad. Anyway, I'm gonna see if I can lift this seal and get this window to sit in there properly but i can't film it so i'll be back all right we're making micro progress but as you can see this seal is all chewed to shit i'm probably gonna end up digging the seal out just so i can push the window back in and then gorilla taping it on just to make sure it holds doesn't have to look pretty i only paid 100 bucks for it so i got the trim out and all back in again but the only problem is is this won't sit flush then i look back here i don't know if that comes up on camera but there's totally a freaking screw there so i have no idea how the hell that screw is installed or for that matter why because because of that like you come over on this side you can totally tell that it sits flush with the mount like it's it's perfectly smooth not sure why it's taped shut but that's some other thing going on i don't think that'll open up on its own free will it's got a clamp on it. Yeah, there's totally a freaking metal screw in there. So I'm debating on taking off the window completely, like just pulling it right out. Cause I can't, this window doesn't slide, it doesn't move. It's basically locked in place with this weather stripping. And it definitely gives a clear shot for the mosquitoes just to come waltzing in. And seeing how this is the good window with the screen, if we go camping, this is the one that has to open cause the other one will just let mosquitoes in. So I'm not quite sure. Number one, what kind of a redneck repair dum dum was thinking jamming a screw through it? Because yeah, this should easily be able to get in there but for some reason. And I can't see why he put a screw through it because literally this window sits in and then this metal plate that goes all around it gets bolted on and holds it holds it into the freaking the truck cab. So I honestly have no idea why this was done the way it was done. So there's two options I have. Either take this trim, trim off take the window out and see if I can remove it. I think I'm gonna do that. All right guys, I'll be back. Actually, no, I don't wanna do that because it's gonna be a whore and a half to try and put this friggin' window back on by myself. I need somebody to hold the window, I think. I think, what's the tolerances here? There's not much tolerances. I doubt the window will just, you know what? Gonna risk it for a biscuit. All right guys, well, I've gone ahead and managed to get the screw out most of the way, but it's still not sitting in there and it's because this piece here needs to go behind it. 
and there's no way to do that that I can see of. This bottom piece is also in there really good, so unless that goes in and then down, but I can't see how that would work. Oh yeah, kid on a mini bike. Look at that, kid on a mini bike. Fun. I remember doing that. Yeah, this just sits in there. She goes pretty deep. I think. I don't know. All I know is it's stuck in there. It's not coming out. So guys, I paid 100 bucks for it. Welcome to my redneck camper. Kicking a redneck. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the seal back in the best that I can. And I caulk the windows with some silicone. Put the seal back in, go from there. All right guys, well, decided to go the red green approach and super seal it with some all weather friggin' Gorilla Tape. It was leaking in this corner over here. That's how I got water inside of the truck. There was a huge pool of water down in the, in the uh, thing down there. The, I don't know, frig, the cave, the valley, whatever you wanna call it. One thing I have a problem though is, is when I had that chainsaw on my back, uh, it spilt bar oil and judging by the looks of that, it's never gonna dry up. So I'm probably gonna throw some kitty litter back there to soak that up, cause it freaking stank. And I really don't want to put a mattress back there with that stank smell. So that's gonna be a thing. So I need to clean up my tools. I have an extension cable going from the wall over to here cause I was using my Dremel to attack that bolt because that's what we do up here. You use the wrong tools on the wrong system just to get the job done. Cause you know what? If it's stupid, but it works, is it really stupid? The answer to that is yes. It's very stupid. So I have to clean up my shit and then uh, go from there. But I think that'll hold. I guess we'll wait till the next rainfall. Then I'll come out and check the uh, check under the cap and see if she took on any agua because I don't think it will. I think we're going to be okay now. Like I said, I paid a hundred bucks for the cap. It'd be different if I bought a brand new two grand and that happened. I'd be back at the shop tomorrow yelling at them. Well, I wouldn't be yelling at them, but I'd be uh, back at the shop tomorrow having them service it and fix it, but paid a hundred bucks for a friggin' eight foot cap. You know, it's got a bunch of battle wounds on it. It's seen things that it doesn't want to talk about. I don't blame it. I really should re replace that receptacle. Look at this. Like she is rotten and gross. The, uh, I plugged in my friggin' power cord here and the guys are still just ripping around on that dirt bike, a mini bike, a little doodle bug. Sounds like it's got a six on it, but uh, yeah, that, that receptacle is pretty much shot. I should probably get around to replacing that with something that's GFI, but whatever. Anyway, I got all my cardboard over here. Dragged out to the side of the road tomorrow. Hopefully they can freaking take it with the recycling truck. I didn't break down the big box. Oh, I farted. Hopefully they can do that. I don't have much garbage to put out tonight. So that's a bonus. And I guess the next big thing is to wait 10 days to get my rest of my Ryobi batteries. I was going to uh, print off the Ryobi mounts for the wall to hang my drill, but seeing how I'm working from home, there's kind of a kind of a problem with doing that right now. I can't have that freaking Ryobi, uh, that the 3D printer going a mile a minute while I'm working during the day because clients are gonna ask me what the hell that noise is in the background because that ender is not exactly quiet sometimes. She really starts to rip around and make a lot of R2D2 C3PO noises and it's kind of brutal. Oh, I didn't close that window. Yeah, we're definitely gonna take on water if I don't close that window. Can I close it from the outside? You know what, I'm gonna just try and close it from the outside. Oh shit, that's coming out, eh? That's quality. Maybe I should gun tape the whole damn thing. <sighs> Whatever. Yeah, I don't care. I really don't care. I'm going inside. I'm freaking hungry. I haven't eaten anything all day and I got some chicken taken out and I'm gonna have some chicken and asparagus tonight. I had that last night. Let me tell you, my piss smells like two stroke gasoline. I am really afraid to pee near an open flame, but I bet you I could piss in one of my two stroke weed whackers and light and get the thing started. Who am I kidding? I got two stroke gasoline in there and I can't even get the sea sucker started. But that's not my problem anymore because I've gone full electric. It was actually kind of funny. My neighbor across the street, caught me mowing the other day and he's all like price of gas getting too expensive for you you had to switch to a hippie mower and i just laughed and i'm like what are you talking about buddy and he's like oh i saw you out there with your little electric mower he's like um it's pretty hard to cut battery cut uh, grass with a drill battery eh? and i'm like bro it's not a drill battery like so i ran to the garage and got the battery for it to show him i'm like this is anything but a drill battery and he went holy crap because I guess um, they sell mowers that run the uh, the 18 volt batteries and you put two of them in there and I don't know, I guess they run them in series or something, but he was uh, thoroughly impressed by the girth of my battery and I appreciate that. Uh, Nikki brought me down a whole friggin' bunch of asparagus from, from uh, her farm. 
whole bunch of asparagus. What I normally do with this is I take it and I put it underneath the chicken. So when I cook the chicken, it gets asparagus into it and it's freaking amazing. I'm just gonna clean up my pan a little bit here. If I can get this soap to come out. Jesus Murphy, I've never seen soap gel up like this before. So yeah, he was all impressed. I showed him the mower and how easy it is to store and stuff. And he's like, oh, you got the weed whacker too. And I'm like, yeah, and the drills and the saws all. I said, my next investment's gonna be the skill saw. I was like, I was thinking about getting a bunch of air tools, but hell, why bother? Let's just get them in freaking battery power. I'd like to get um, one of those uh, torque wrenches. Those, uh, I don't know, bah, you use them on your wheels to like break them free. I'd like to get one of those jobbies and I got an electric one in the garage, but the damn thing is it's, it's AC powered. So you're constantly carrying around an extension cord and you need a really good extension cord for it too. Or otherwise it's going to catch fire because in the garage, when we were using it to take the engine out of my truck, not the Ford, my old Sierra. Uh, every time you fired it up, the lights would turn off because there was so much damn draw on the, on the circuit that it just couldn't. It's going to spread these guys around the pan. There's a lot of them here and I'm okay with that because I love asparagus. I just don't like my pee. I love asparagus. I just don't like my pee pee pee. I'm going to get this party started. So we did some fun stuff today. We inspected the window. We fixed the seal and then we really fixed the seal. Like I said guys, it's a redneck operation, but you should know by now. Welcome to the channel. So yeah, that's my show for today. That's what I did. I basically attempted to fix my my new, where are my keys? Oh yeah, where'd I put those? I gotta go back out of the garage and find my keys because I have no idea where the hell I put them. And I'm hoping I didn't leave them in the truck because that's a good way to get your truck stolen. It's also an easy way to get your truck stolen. I might have left them in the garage. Really gotta put a whistle on those. Ah, they could be upstairs. I'm just gonna check inside the truck and make sure I didn't throw them on the seat because that's just, that's just inviting somebody to come over and break a window and steal my truck. I don't see them over there. I don't see them over here. Yeah, I think they're upstairs. I'll go check. Better be safe than sorry. I'm usually sorry all the time though. <sighs> oh yeah. I saw Kevin the bunny the other day. He's still kicking it. I swear to Christ, he weighs 72 pounds. Holy shit, did he pack on weight? Well, I didn't tell you guys that. Well, I know I did tell you guys that I bought a, a bag of uh, grain and I poured it in the backyard and Kevin was the only one there feasting. And I'm pretty sure that's exactly what he did. This guy's freaking out. Jesus, Murphy Oreo, calm down. Such a space cadet. My keys are right here, which would have been tragic because this one has the Trans Am on it. And I think it's the only set for the Trans Am that I have. Should probably get another set cut, but I don't know if they make these types of keys anymore. You know, back in the General Motor days, unlocked your door, started your car. Not sure why they couldn't have one key for all, but I guess it was a valet thing. Anyway, lock the doors, hang up the key on my new homemade key rack, wait for dinner. And anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, down below they go. By all means, leave them. I like reading them, it's fun. And until next time, guys, live it to win it. Peace the frig out. Sit, stupid, sit. Good dog.